and I, I degreased these screens this morning before you guys came in. So you get a scoop coater. Tight on there. All right, this scoop coater has a round edge and a sharp edge, and you guys can feel that. Now what I like to do with, with mash that is below about 230, I like to coat with the sharp edge. And the reason being is I want to be able to get um, more across into the mesh. Uh, I can do that with a sharper edge if I go slow than I can with a rounder edge. Now, you've got more open area and in, the, in the, the grids that are in the mesh itself uh, at like a 110 mesh or 123 mesh. When you go up to 305 mesh, that grid is much tighter. It's threads per inch, so you've got more threads per inch. It's a tighter grid that you're transferring to. This side gives you a little bit more in the uh, round edge. I like to use that side for the higher mesh counts because it helps transfer enough product through that higher mesh count. And a lot of guys have always said, well, you know, let's use a sharp edge on the higher, but it's, it's not correct because you want to try to get as much product through that grid as, you're, as possible. You don't want to hinder that. Uh, so that way you get the, the correct coating. So that's, uh, that's your scoop coater. What I like to do is, is apply, you know, maybe about uh, a third to a half of a trough. And, you know, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna coat a lot of screens, you don't need to fill it up. It's harder to work with when it's real full. Try to be clean as you work. Don't make a mess. And I dripped a little bit on the edge, so you want to wipe that off. Um, so what we can do here, this is 230 mesh. And what I'll do is I will coat um, the round edge. Um, what I like to do is apply the scoop coater to the mesh flip it by leaning the screen a little bit more to get the emulsion to transfer, then start your pull. And you want good pressure against the mesh. And then what I like to do is lean it up and lean it back so that the flow comes back into the coater and then scrape up to get the heavy deposit off. Okay. So we coated one there. Now we come back. And we coat two. And good pressure against it. You can't feel like you're pressing too hard. That's, that's one of the biggest misnomers about coating screens. These guys will just put a gentle pressure on there and then they'll, they won't be even. So at least you're a single point in your hand and you're pressing against it. You kind of balance out the forces across the scoop coater and you're you're getting uh, you're getting good pressure all the way across if you lighten up then you may be heavier on one side less on the other then what happens is you'll get different exposures because you have different thicknesses so so that was that's two and two 
One of the things you want to look at is you want to see it getting glossy because if it still looks dry, then you know you're not getting good transfer. You're not getting it through. Am I starting to drip there? So we'll put that second coat on. Now, if you get a little heavy area like we did there, take a scraper card or a piece of chunk of cardboard or whatever, and just scrape this off. Because you may get it from just your edge of your scoop coaters, not as tight as it, as it should be or whatever. By doing that, now I don't have a good thick edge in there, so when I go to reclaim the screen, it won't, I won't be fighting that. And, and you kind of change that right here so you're not sending that through the process. So now we dry, excuse me, and we just, um, what I like to do is dry gasket down so that, so that the gasket will hang there uh, and, and keep that gasket. If you flip it over because of the way the rack is or whatever, then you're fighting against yourself and that gasket could start to move its way back down into the mesh. Did, did it matter when you put the degrees one straight up in It, does, it yeah. doesn't matter. I like to do it like that. And the reason is, is you have a glued area on that fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's glued to the screen frame. So you may have some glue that's gone across into the mesh area. If you flip that over, now you got a trough in there that's going to pin water or maybe bead water between the glued area and the, and the frame itself. And then you got to pick it up and you got to coat it and then all of a sudden you got a water streak through your frame. There's nothing worse than that because now you got to dry it again before you coat it. So I, I flip them just so we can get gravity working a little bit more and, and it'll tend to, tend to solve that problem. So with really fine detail printing, and this is like high-end graphics, like where you're printing 305, 355, 380 mesh, what happens is a thing called RZ comes into effect. RZ is the roughness of that stencil, okay? And that's how the squeegee will transfer across it and how the inks will. We want a fairly low RZ, um, I think, I think seven is a flat surface like glass, like a very smooth surface. So you want to be above that number. You don't want to be too close to it because now when you print on a very flat surface like a sticker, you've got two smooth surfaces together and now your screen's going to want to stick to it. So you need some RZ to be able to get it to release. Where, where face coating comes in, is if a guy has an emulsion that just dries in real, real, real fast and it dries into the mesh and so now you see the knuckle of the mesh very high, um, what happens is now you've got a high RZ. And when they go to print things and you go to get this dot to release, that dot may start to look like that if the RZ is real high because the squeegee's kind of chattering across and everything's kind of getting vibration in it from having an RZ. So what you do to try to fill those voids is you come back on a dry screen and you coat like one and one to try to fill that zone, that edge. Now, a lot of that really doesn't happen in textile because the dot, dots are bigger. You're printing onto a, another mesh in the woven fabric that you print. So there's RZ on the fabric already, so you're not having those, those effects kind of happening. It's more in flat stock printing and, and decal and poster and things like that. Where you'll start to see some of that. So if you're getting dots that, that even if you're getting the gasket right and you're not getting the dot to release and, and be a proper circle or proper square or whatever line that is. If you're still seeing some roughness there, you may have an RZ issue. What you want to do is, is just coat 
uh, and it'll be kind of hard because they'll gum up and want to stick. So just a good even and just go one and one. Um, you could do either, whichever you're comfortable with. I don't think it really matters that much because you're not going to get that much through it because you're onto a, a closed surface. So you just want to get consistent coating there. Um, so that's uh, so but that's the, that. The trough will push the trough, the trough will chatter on that as it's going up. No, it, it shouldn't. You know, good even pressure. Good even pressure. It may a little bit if it's not fully dry, you know, because it's a little gummy. Yeah, yeah. They, there's a technique to it. There, there, there definitely is. So, but that's something you can do if you're seeing those issues. One of the things to to be able to see these things is I is I really recommend if you're trying to push the envelope and print half tones and things like that, is you get a loop, and a loop is like this is. This is a 10 times loop, and it's got a light on it, and you can look at the dot. There's 100 times loops. Um, it helps with registration. If you've got several registration marks and you're printing a several, several color job, it's easier just to take a loop and look at that target and make sure you're getting them all to line up than it is trying to really eyeball it. And is that line on top of it, or is it next to it? Just you know, they, they sell them at film stores. They're a little metal, like 30 times, 30 power loop. It's not a bad thing just to throw it in your pocket and have it there for production. And you can look at things. The other thing it's nice to look at is if you've been printing a halftone job and you're 100 pieces into it, you may want to look at what's coming off the end of the dryer or off the end of a rack on, on printing poster stock. And look at that dot and see if it's as clean as it was when you guys first started, when you first proofed it and really looked at it. Because you want to, you know, maybe have to go back and wash that screen because you got some buildup or something got into it and, and it's not printing as clean as it needs to be. So then maybe you wash it up. But but it's it's just a good tool to see, to have. No, what I'm saying is when you've when you've when you've gone to register and you've and you've microed it, yeah. When you go to strike it off, take a look at the loop with that. that I think that'll give you a better idea of exactly what movements you need to make to bring it into registration faster than just trying to eye, eyeball. It's a it's just a quick tool. It's a printer's tool. You know, I I, I really recommend having this one's kind of a, an exotic one. They make little metal ones that are about yay big by yay big, fold up and go in your pocket. So let me clean this trough up and unless anybody else wants to coat? No? Okay. Maybe it's a brand new trough, so I don't know if it was glued, glued proper. So try to get as much product back in to your uh, scoop coater, and then if you, if you did coat, um, there's probably going to be some bubbles in this from doing the process. So let this rest an hour or so before you go back to coating, no if need be. No, only if you had really dirty screens that you were coating and maybe you were picking up some junk into the trough. You don't want to put that back in here, so maybe you have a separate container. But if you're cleaning your screens properly and the mesh is clean, it's not a big deal. I think he was meaning the air bubbles from pouring it in the trough. Uh, no, no, I, I don't think that's a big issue. You're not getting that much. Um, you know, you don't want to be up here, <laughs> but you know, it, it's uh, just just the along the edge. Will keep it close. Yeah, yeah. See, yep. So let me. Uh
Let me just rinse this real quick. And the other thing is when you put your, your scoop coaters into the sink and you go to wash them, make sure you're not banging them against stuff and dinging the, the uh, trough edge. It's very important to keep those edges as smooth and as consistent as you can. Um, because once you start adding nicks to it, now that's a line on the screen when you coat it, and that's going to change your image. 